All right, everybody. I wanted to provide a bit of a walkthrough for getting started with Try Hack Me. Um, basically, we're going to start up our Kali VM, and then we're going to uh, log into the Try Hack Me platform, register if we haven't done so already, and then uh, maybe work with the first room. All right. So, uh, if you have an opportunity, go ahead and open up your Kali VM. I'm going to go ahead and resize mine so it's a little bit bigger, hopefully. Alright. Now, remember the default credentials in the latest versions of Kali are going to be the username Kali, K-A-L-I, password, K-A-L-I, Kali, Kali. Keep it simple. All right, so this is my Kali VM. That's what it looks like. Uh, I'm going to hit Control-Alt-T on the keyboard, and that should open up a terminal for me. And I'm going to use this real quick. I'm going to try to ping Google just to see if I have a connection to the internet. P-I-N-G Google.com. And you can see that because I'm getting a response, I do. So I can go ahead and hit Control C on my keyboard to cancel that and then move it out of the way. Um, next, I'll go to my, uh, this is the Kali menu. It's, you can think of it as kind of analogous to the start button. Um, I'm going to find the web browser. If you wanted, just like in Windows, what you can do is click the Kali button and type uh, Firefox. You can type the name of your application, basically, that you're looking for. Or web browser, or, I don't know, Metasploit, or anything of that nature, right? So if we're looking for a terminal, we can type terminal. So if we're looking for something, you can kind of search for an application that way. Uh, if you want a text editor, again, text editor. Uh, and we'll go through some, some ways to set this up. Um, and sort of customize it later, but for the time being, I'm just going to open up the web browser. All right, and you'll notice that this is just regular old Firefox. It just comes pre-installed. So uh, the website we're trying to go to is tryhackme.com. And you can see that this website is about cybersecurity training. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to join now. If you haven't already registered, um, it's a good opportunity to do that. You're going to want to pick a really cool username. That's important. And we need our email. So I've already actually registered. This part is probably going to ask you to go through and validate, check your email, click a link, something to that effect. Um, if you've already done the registration part, you can figure that part out. Uh, you're just going to need to log in. So I'm going to get my credentials here it's good practice to use a password manager and so I have to log into my password manager on another computer here um, password is Okay, so I'm gonna paste that. Not a robot. If any luck, it will believe me. I'll go ahead and save it for the time being. All right, and this is what it looks like when you log in. Of course, you gotta confirm the little cookie things. So I believe one of the first rooms we asked folks to go through um, was the O, uh, the Intro to Research room. So uh, when you click on the Learn tab, like this will give you the dashboard and this is kind of the general lay of it. Um, you have sort of your current activities, the things you've been up to. Um, you can hit Learn, and this is going to take you to a way to search through all the rooms. If you wanted to find new rooms as they're released, um, if you wanted to find whole learning paths, and learning paths in this context are really just a collection of rooms that you'll complete. Room is really kind of, um, 
it's the idea of a, of, a, of a set of challenges. And so this has 38 sets of challenges. There might be one or more objectives in each one, likely five or more objectives in each one. Um, you can see here that this one, they estimate 48 hours worth of like time on keyboard doing something. This complete beginner estimates 64 hours of time on keyboard. Um, so you could sort of use that to, to gauge how much time um, it would actually take to complete that uh, particular learning path. Um, and mind you, a lot of these are gonna be free, freely available. Um, so let's look here. Um, we knew that we are looking for intro to research. That was one of the, the links that we were given. Um, and when I say that, what I can do is search intro to, oops, I'm sorry, to research. Uh, introductory research. And I'm sort of confirming the URL, like that was the link that was in the slides, right? So I happen to have a paid account. And when you have a paid account, a lot of times you will see these um, videos come up and they are um, sort of walkthroughs, like video walkthroughs for this particular platform. Um, don't worry about having to pay for an account. You can do 100% of the content generally for free. Um, and there are also these community write-ups to sort of help guide you along the way as well. Um, so I wouldn't worry about a whole lot of that right now, um, having to register for anything or pay for anything extra. Um, so the way that these things sort of work is that they usually have these accordions. Um, and when you click on them, you can sort of read through, uh, and the way that it works is there is a question and then a button to sort of check your answer, or in, in this instance, it says there's no answer or no answer needed. You can just hit question done, and it'll give you the little green check mark, and you can progress on to the next thing. If we open the second little task, um, it'll ask you to you know start looking at typical research question you're likely to find working through a CTF, okay? Um, and so it says here that you've downloaded an image from a remote server and you suspect there's something hidden in it. How can you get it out? So we start by asking the question of Google, you know, how do we hide things inside of images? All right, that's fair. Um, we see, okay, well, this is a very common, uh, this is a very good video from com uh, Computer File. Um, there's a bunch of tools perhaps, you know, list, listed out. Um, all right, so we now know that it's possible, and it's saying let's you know find out how it's done, and then they give you a bunch of list of tools. Um, okay, so it says here that there's a tool called Steghide, um, and then we just kind of scrolling through reading. This is just this is just doing research via Google. Um, you know, if you you come up with a good question, you can you can tune your question. Um, by you know adding adding and removing specific you know components to it. Uh, for instance, you know that the Steghide tool may not be installed by default. So how do I install the program? Right, specifically how I install the Steghide program. Um, so that's you know a good first step. So let's switch back. Yada yada. This is uh, here we go. Edge. All right, so let's see if we can answer this, some of these questions real quick. Um, following your research skills, the free code appropriate, search queries, and the hints. In the Burp Suite program that ships with Kali, what mode do you need to manually send a request, often repeating a captured request multiple, numerous times? Well, first of all, what is Burp Suite? Uh, man, they made it easy. I can right click, <laughs> search Google, all right? Okay, so Burp Suite. Um, let's see, it's application security testing software. And what else did it say? It said, what mode would you use to manually send a request, often repeating a captured request numerous times? Okay, so I go back here, repeat. Okay, 
And this is another nice thing about Google. Somebody else has likely searched this, and so they're giving me suggestions. Okay, so what is Burp Repeater? A simple tool for manually manipulating and reissuing individual HTTP and WebSocket messages. So what did it ask? It asked, what mode would you use to manually send a request, often repeating captured request? Repeating, reissuing, uh, those words are kind of synonymous. I think burp repeater sounds reasonable. What does this help me? Oh man, there's even a video. How to resend individual messages with burp repeater. Excellent, okay, cool. So I'm gonna type repeater submit. It turns out I was right. So I'm gonna hit hint. And again, you can do the hint. I, I think they're generally free of cost. I mean, you don't lose points or anything like that. Um, but once, you, once you've gotten the hint, I think that's the only hint you get uh, most of the time. Sometimes they might have one or more hints, who knows. Um, so it says manually send. All right, so that's, what, that's another thing we could have searched for and found you know, a comparable answer. All right, so what format are modern Windows login passwords stored in? Man, that's a straight up question. I can just ask Google. Okay, so, hmm, well, maybe. All right, so I'm gonna say hash format, or what hash format are modern Windows passwords stored in? So, hash format, One way hash is lm hash, nt hash, lm, following our uppercase. So I'm gonna just maybe even get it simpler. Okay. This is just internet. This is Googling. This is all this is. Um, introduction to hashing, rainbow tables. Uh, for some reason, the website's not loading fast enough. And I, okay, there you go. That's why UI UX is, a, is important because I got frustrated and I left the website. <laughs> so, let's see. Huh. NT hash is simply hash. So, Here's a trick on try hack me, and this is, uh, I'll call it metagaming, like in D&D &D or something. Um, the answer format they give you, you know, if you count the number of asterisks in some of the special characters, like the space character, that is the form or the shape, if you will, of the answer. So I know that the answer to this question has four characters. Um, there's a bunch of passwords, or I'm sorry, not passwords, but um, options that uh, I can that I can guess through that just from my personal experience I know um, could be potential answers so I saw a couple of things in my Googles I saw I saw SHA2 SHA numeral 2 without the hyphen I know NTLM I saw this LM hash eradication link um, but NTLM is something that is very common. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Um, this is new. Okay. Uh, sure. Pick up name. Default part. Sure. Great. Get started. Get out of here. All right. New. So, uh, what did we say? SHA 2 is a possibility. Um, I think I saw MD4, yeah, the NT hashes, and I haven't even gone into these websites. I'm strictly looking at, um, you know, just the results in Google. MD4, there's something wrong with that one already. NTLM is a valid one. Hmm, okay. So let's go back to this one and maybe because it's, 
it loaded once before, it'll be cached and it'll load faster. Maybe. Maybe. Alright. Ah! What's happening? <laughs> there it goes. Okay. It's loaded. You really only need to know the following three basic concepts before extracting Windows hashes. LM hash, the land manager, LM, is an old and weak technique for creating hash passwords. It's been disabled in current Windows environments. All right, so that it's not LM hashes. Uh, NT, or NTLM hash, is a new and more secure way of hashing. It encodes the password in UTF-16, Little Indian, then hashes with MD4 hashing algorithm. You need to know more about Windows hashes. The following article makes it easy to understand. Okay. So that's, you know, following some link to another website. Cool. So I think, I'm going to guess NTLM is the answer. A couple of context clues. I had four characters, paste, submit. Turns out that was correct. What did my hint have to say? Hashing algorithm for Windows. What did we search? I straight up copy stuff. Hash format, Windows login passwords, right? So this is how to Google more better, right? And that's, that's all there is to this. Um, what are automated tasks called in Linux? Again, that's a fair enough question for the internet. Man, I did nothing but copy and paste. Cron job. Look at the shape of the answer. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Cron jobs. I think I can just go ahead and type that. I'm pretty confident that that's the answer. I didn't read anything else. Such tasks are referred to as cron jobs. Cron jobs are useful for automation of tasks that come in handy and help simplify the execution of repetitive tasks and sometimes mundane tasks. Let's hit the hint first. Let's see. It says, search for automated tasks Linux. Tron jobs submit. What? What happened? I got the answer wrong. I got the uh-oh answer wrong. Because I didn't match the shape of the answer. Right? The shape is one, two, three, four characters, a space, one, two, three, four characters. And let's type cron space jobs. Whoop whoop. My answer is correct. Great. Okay. So what number base could you use as shorthand for base 2? Binary. Hmm. I don't know. It says what number base could you use as a shorthand for base 2? Binary. What's our hint say? Octal base eight is not the correct answer. Could you use it as shorthand for base two? Binary. I want to say base ten, but I'm not sure. Shorthand for base two. I guess base sixteen? Hexadecimal? I'm going to search Google for that. All right, so now base 16 is making a little more sense. As shorthand for binary, as you will see. So we see hexadecimal computer science and, and cybersecurity stuff all the time um, because that's how we represent bytes more often than not. Um, not. Not so much in the binary representation, but in the hexadecimal representation just because it's easier to keep track of you know, two characters as opposed to a string of eight characters. So let's say base 16. Submit. Cool deal. If a password hash starts with dollar sign six dollar sign, what format is it? The Unix variant. Don't know. Google. It's not six dollars shirts.com. 
although that could be fun. So all I did was search for $6.6. $6. That didn't give me what I want, so I've got to tell Google I want something more specific. Ah, uh, you can see that somebody else has already asked this question. How do I know this? How do I know that someone else has already asked it? Because the, the little su suggested searches, um, hash decrypt, like that was in the context of the question, that was one of the right things. It says, what, if a password hash starts with dollar six dollar sign, what format is it? Unix variant. Hash decrypt, I'm gonna click on that one. So let's see. I'm going to type Unix variant because that was in the question. If a password hash starts with what format is it? Wait a minute. That's like almost exactly what the question was on TriAcme. It's like somebody maybe put their homework up here or something. You'd be surprised how much of cybersecurity is really just searching Google. Oh, I recognize that question. <laughs> how meta is that? All right. So, da da da. It says that resource is designed to help you learn how to find things out for yourself. All the answers that you I know that for the record, we made that room in the first place. Ah, how fun. So it says here, da da da. So if you learn, search for yourself. Rather than ask people, that's a very important. Um, and the is yourself. That said, the answer the right direction. Uh, hash crackers, for example. Yada yada. Let's go. So, you know, uh, message. Um, is that you just sometimes got harder than the literal first. Um, let's figure out. I keep seeing. This Five twelve. So, da, 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 da. encrypted passwords. Encrypted passwords. No. MD five. Now I have. Isn't giving me what I'm looking for. Hash cat. I saw that when it was dollar sign six dollars. Oh, wait a second. Oh. All of a sudden, I'm getting a lot more relevant results. Hack me, call that in the search. Click on this one here. Oh, wow. Part of a lesson. So, okay. Let's see, the salt fallen. The name Jose. The six indicates there's a type six password. SHA 512, many rounds. The character after up to the next are the salt. All right. So I'm pretty confident that the answer is SHA-512, but that doesn't answer my 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 shape here. So SHA-512, that's seven characters, and I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Hmm. 
Let's look at our hint. Oops. Cry. Something, 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 cry. Oh, okay. So think of it like a game of Hangman. So you've got all these blank spots, and then the last couple of characters are C R Y. In my mind, my mind went to crypt. C R Y P T. So something that ends in crypt. So what could that be? Search for the word crypt. Uh, encrypt method. One SHA 512 crypt. I just search, I hit control F and search for the word crypt in this page to see if it shows up. This might be the right length right there. So let's go back to Google, maybe get a little bit stronger, stronger confirmation. Type six is what it said. Type six. And then it was um, crypt Unix variant. Ah, that kind of took me off the wrong way. Type dollar six. Shaw two fifty six and Shaw five twelve. Doesn't cost anything. Submit. That was it. Cool deal. So it looks like we answered questions. Let's go ahead and close that part of. Says off. Some content man. Here are vulnerable to very. Such as exploit VD. Um. those for like academic uh, to say and a lot of db on the other hand Leverage a um, look at it. I would be you know, any, any kind of computer. mess around with for you. Twenty nineteen on as a
public code for today. which is probably the map. So. Some information from the system. That declared vulnerable WA is Outlook Web Act. to uh, to the website I'm sorry, extract the email. Folder ID in the path. I don't know, just looking. All right. website. Well, okay, that's an A lot of these things you can hit top, so on and so forth. Really Put the windows side by okay, so search for it. Partial matches, so few. Books that I wanted to find. All right, let's see. Um, we have here.
made. Years ago. Versus 1.4. to it to the web application You can download self is the or pass Let's see. I'm just going to type WP form. I'm going to try to get some time. I'm just going to go over here. WP form. Which one's the right one? Exploit is already e number. 
remember. I did not put you meant to put the window According to this sentence, I'm searching. over the red hat one represents there CVE Yeah. Is there not? submission so Let's see
the is there an is there mind that the year 2021 always going to be four digits in the VLC vulnerability That one was seven. Okay, so I'm. Seven. Oh, all right. So A 2020 buffer of twenty twenty buffer I'm going to type. I don't want it going bad. I want it to buffer. There's one on. So this is an crash, but I couldn't do anything more. Take it to the next level. Oh, wow, this is uh, so. so twenty twenty buffer over E to the you know, it never actually to the responsible disclosure until you know, 2019. So, um, I'm gonna go. Was correct. All right.
the manual pages pretty quick learn Linux rooms yep 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 I think Linux is pretty popular and command do um Man stands for how to use in this in SSH. I could type nation the manual or uh, used to remotely connect. To it. Right, it gives you a description. Um, it gives you elements, and here's the synopsis, like the quickest. Um, thumb, if it's or not, is kind of convention. It's in square brackets. If it doesn't have anything, it's mandatory. So, um, and they generally um, sort of go in that in that order. For instance, I could not put um, this this command. I could not put it in front of the destination, right? This, uh, the way that this command works is it's invoke the secure shell uh, to the destination and then at that destination invoke this command. Right? Or invoke meaning just to start or run. So, all right. Uh, so, let's see. We can see in the description that the syntax is user at host. Where did it see? Where does it show that? If you scroll down, probably to the bottom, and by scroll, I do mean use your arrow keys. Um, this particular Kali VM is set up to let you use your your mouse to scroll, but not all of them will. I'm looking at this right now. If I wanted to get back to my terminal, I would have to hit the Q button to quit. Q for quit. Pretty straightforward. All right. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. So it says, now it's your turn. Let's answer the following questions about the man command. SCP is a tool used to copy files from one computer or another. What switch would you use to copy an entire directory? Man SCP. All right, so I can scroll through this. And man, is that gonna take a while. Um, here, pro tip, if you will, you can type forward slash, that's the one next to the shift key below the enter key on the right hand side of the keyboard. You can use that as a sort of search, right? Or it's not even sort of a search, it is a search. So um, I want to, let's see, copy to an entire directory. I'm gonna say directory. I'm gonna search for the word directory. I'm gonna hit the enter key. And it's going to jump me to the first occurrence of the word directory. And you'll notice that it's even highlighted. So if I hit the slash key and then the enter key again, that's the only that's the only occurrence of the word directory. I find that hard to believe. I hit the home key to jump to the top of the page. I'm going to try it again. Maybe I missed it. Directory. Nope, that's the only instance. So let's think about what they're asking us to do. I think they're asking us, I think I know the answer. Ah, there it is right there. There's this tech R. It says recursively copy entire directories. What are they asking us to do? They want us to copy an entire directory. Recursive just means do the same operation. So what that's, anytime you see a recursive operation in like a Linux command, it's gonna go as pretty much as deep as it can. So. Let's look, it says tack R. So SCP tack R. What's our hint tell us? Man SCP, oh, that was, that was the hint, huh? Okay. Okay. So it says FDisk is a command to use to view and alter partitioning scheme used on your hard drive. What switch would you use to list the current partitions? Hmm, 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 hmm. I don't know. Man 
F disk to list the current partitions. List the partition tables for a specific device. So, okay, that makes sense. Tac L list. You'll notice that they have the short form, the BSD form, I think it, or eh, actually, this might be the BSD form. I don't remember which one is which. Oh well. Um, just note that sometimes, not all the time, sometimes you have short forms of the the command flags uh, or the arguments, and then the long form. Sometimes it's nice to have the long form because it's very obvious what that command is going to do, or at least what, what you're altering about the program by running it. So I think it's going to be tech L. So I'm going to hit submit. And it looks like I got that right. Good deal. So it says here, Nano is an easy to use text editor for Linux. Though there are arguably better editors, Vim being an obvious choice. However, Nano is a great one to start with. Which switch would you use to make a backup when opening a file with Nano? While I'm in man currently, I'm going to hit Q to get out of that particular man page, manual page. I'm going to type man nano. And what is it asking me for? It's asking me for to, to make a backup. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Well, I can scroll through, and when I find options, that's generally what I, I use. So what does it say here? Okay, so these are the options. Uh, looks like the answer was right there. Tech B, backup. When saving a file, backup the previous version using the current name suffix with a tilde. So I'm gonna say Tech Big B and let's see what that does. That was correct, excellent, okay. So Netcat is a basic tool used to manually send and receive network requests. What command would you use to start Netcat in listen mode using port 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? So, okay. I'm going to get out of this man page. I'm going to go into a man page for the Netcat command. Something to note. Notice that I typed out the entire word Netcat. Yet the name of the program they're showing is NC. Just be mindful of that. So let's do this. I'm going to type man NC. Takes me to the same thing. So it's it's an alias command. It, it has another name. The, the short name people generally almost always use is NC. So it's asking us what command would we use to start netcat in listen mode. So I'm going to go search for listen. Okay, and this is a good example because if I search, and again I use the forward slash, that's the one in the lower right hand side of the keyboard, um, it's highlighting all of the instances of listen. So at the top of the screen, this is where it actually stopped. But if I hit slash, enter again, it jumps me to the next one, slash, enter. It's just going to repeat that search until I give it a new, um, a new command to search for, or a new, uh, yeah, a new word to search for. So Netcat is a basic tool. Da 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 da. What command would you use to start Netcat in listen mode using port one two three five? Hmm. So let's think about that. Another thing, I know that there's a command called NC. I'm just gonna type NC. Oops, control C. And that, that was a bad example because I didn't really do anything. NC TAC TAC help. Alright. Another bad example. That's great. But this is what happens when you use computers, man. This is just how it goes. Um, it's telling me tech H for help. So a single tech H. We're figuring out. Here is a Summary that Netcat tells me how I should listen for a command. Oh no. So what happened there is I selected my text and I accidentally pasted it and told it to run. So let's do this. I'm gonna type clear and that'll clear my screen. I'm gonna type NC space tag H. Alright, alright, alright. So listen for an inbound connection. 
is what it's telling me. NC, TAC L, TAC P, and then some port number. Listen mode. And if I want to connect to somewhere, I NC, some host, some port. So let's try that. Let's NC, TAC L to listen, TAC P for a port, and that port that we want is 12345. Submit. Turns out we got it right. Good deal. All right, and so that's that particular section on the intro to research. All right, so uh, you may have been told in school there are good resources and bad sources of information. This may be true when it comes to essays and referencing information. However, it's my pleasure to state that it does not apply here. Any information can be potentially useful. So feel free to use blogs, Wikipedia, anything else that contains what you're looking for. Um, blogs are especially, it says. Um, all right, so now that you've completed this room, yada yada, uh, you might check out the Google dorking room. That's a very good one as well. I'm gonna hit completed, and then that's our answer. And then it says, hey, congratulations, we completed the room. We can share this on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. There's even confetti in the background if you saw it, so. Um, I'm going to go back to my dashboard at this point, and let's see. Let's see what happens. Does it show us? Have we done anything recently? This room. Excellent work. Um, so that's it for right now. That's on Try Hack Me. We're walkthroughs like these for um, again it don't there are going to be a ton of other and write-ups and things um, once we start machines and hacking them is that we end up recording well